Good to know you're still with us on The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Now, prior to October 20, infamous Lekki shootings, which led to wanton destruction of property and goods arising from the NSAS protests, the federal government had launched the application for the 75 billion naira Nigeria Youth Investment Fund. During the launch of the application, the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, said that the fund underscored the importance placed on youths by the current administration. The minister said that the fund, which is an initiative of the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development and funded by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, would be spread over three years to cater to youth-owned businesses and investment needs. And to help us uh, know more about this and uh, throw more light on this and how this works, we have uh, joining us a public affairs analyst, Olali Kon Adigun. Thank you so much for joining us and for stepping in. So I'll, I'll shoot the first question and say, very ambitious, a lot of persons will say, but how feasible is it considering that the, uh, the lifespan will exceed this uh, administration and knowing our history with keeping with promises made by an administration, you don't even know which party is going to come. Well, uh, if you're talking about uh, some of these uh, projects, uh, but these were projects that were reactions to the uh, lockdown of the COVID-19. Uh, so we will see that the government just wanted to uh, come up with post-COVID recovery with all these funds. We are talking about things like uh, the MSME uh, Survival Fund. We are talking about the, Nigeria, uh, the Youth Investment Fund. So many of, so many of them as a way to ensure post-COVID recovery. That is one way. So the second thing that we have to know is that the federal government wanted to achieve this post-COVID recovery through massive investments in social investment programs. And with that, you need a situation that will uh, uh, guarantee uh, young people, uh, businesses that have lost uh, some money uh, during the COVID lockdown and, uh, and several other losses in, uh, as a way to ensure that the government actually fulfills its social responsibility to the people. So that is one uh, of the things that the government tried to achieve with, all the, with, with this fund. The, the government also says over a million applications have been received uh, so far uh, since the portal went live. What does that say, really? Good. We have a country, we, we are in a country where people are coming out of a COVID lockdown, obviously. We, have a, we, are, we are in a country where peop, a lot of uh, people are actually unemployed due to, uh, 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 due to COVID lockdown. Also, many, of, many people lost their jobs. So government actually wanted to retain uh, uh, jobs or, or, or a way to ensure that people have some degree of stability, people have some, uh, some things to fall back on for a while, while, uh, uh, while looking for uh, alternative sources of income. So I think, in my opinion, the, uh, you, you talked about the, well, the sustainability. Uh, I think we, that will be put to test over time. But for now, the, the best I think the government can do is all these social investment programs, at least to get people on their feet again. Okay, let, let's uh, look at it. Um, don't you just inquire and answer that question of our sustainability. But let's move on and look at the parts where there is a promise that the formal, the informal uh, kind of businesses that we have will be uh, transformed, transition. They will transition uh, to become formal enterprises with the help of this uh, fund. How is that going to work, really? A lot of we know that sometimes they say there will be a lot of training but sometimes this training don't come to pass. How, what is your understanding of how this will be done in such a way that fairness will be seen to have been done? Okay, if you look at uh, some of the uh, uh, decisions that, for example, you talk about the uh, guaranteed takeoff uh, scheme where for an initial period of three months you are paid uh, is, is, uh, some, some stipend just as a way to get you uh, off your feet again over, over time. And you also have the, uh, the payroll support system. In this, in this instance, you are going to be paid uh, for uh, people that own SMEs or, or what is it called. You are going to be paid, your staff, a maximum of 10, will be paid for a period of three months initially and uh, 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 what's it called? Will, uh, will be further uh, renegotiated okay. for, for, for a while. So I think uh, going by the uh, GDP, because I, before I came to you, you are talking about the uh, contraction of the economy. I think these are things that, we sh uh, we, that will come to play in, in this regard. 
I, I, I would always like to bring in, you know, the other aspects, um, aside intervention funds, aside trader money, aside, you know, these little things that the government always steps in and, you know, almost seems like a knee-jerk reaction. Um, I, I want, you know, to also assume that, you know, it's also important that we have an enabling environment for businesses to somehow, some way survive um, the environment, the, you know, year and the, the times that we are in. Um, so when you, you know, want to put these intervention funds without the presence of stable electricity, without, you know, an enabling environment for businesses generally to thrive, um, isn't this, you know, once more a knee-jerk reaction that, you know, would only survive a few months and that's it? Oh, uh, I, I don't think so, because if you look at it, uh, the uh, social event intervention program that have been, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, initiated by this administration, I don't want to sound political, but you see uh, maybe some uh, degree of uh, transparency, so to say, at least as confirmed by the World Bank uh, in the case of um, uh, the uh, uh, trader money and and well uh, and some of the because that is uh, what 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 usually happens when you have so small steps like this actually matter in times like this because for example you may think oh what is let's say thirty thousand naira for example to a small uh, to a small artisan by the streets who who have obviously lost everything who is about to even sell uh, all his equipment and go back to the village and things like that so these monies can actually be what like the only saving grace some of these people have so and these are actually on the platform on which the economy stands the informal sector the young people the artisans i get my point so those small business and those small minute decisions are actually things that matter at times you, like you, this you, you, you do you feel 30,000 naira really will be the answer to millions of MSMEs across the country Surely not. and and also do we ever get to have a conversation about the success of these intervention programs um, can we say, oh, this is what we did with trade our money and this is the level of success that has been recorded um, over time? Because it seems like these programs are core and we move on from them without being able to rate the success. Absolutely. And a, few, a you know, couple of months later, there's a new intervention fund. Um, we release another 20,000 naira each to business owners. And, and that's, that's it. You know, we never get to understand how successful was trade our money. How successful will this one be? Um, what level of how would we rate it in the next one year i guess that's the that's one problem with poli, uh, public policy uh, uh uh implementation in nigeria the, the question of appraisal uh performance appraisal and things like we don't seem, seem to get that uh, uh very often and that's always a problem with which i understand but it, as a way we need to have a conversation about uh, questions in this is like transparency uh, 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 area of coverage uh, of of a particular policy and the longevity how it has been able to stand the test of, uh, the test of time so all these things we need uh, things we need to in terms of uh, performance appraisal of a project like this I uh, get, I get it that we are poor with appraisal, particularly for public policy implementation in this country. But again, we have to start somewhere. It's better than doing nothing. All right, let, let's talk about the objectives of the fund itself. Um, aside from financing youth-owned business and, of course, creating the much-needed employment, uh, there is that important aspect of training for uh, you know, managerial or entrepreneurship uh, skills to help them manage the business. I want you to speak on how important this really is in the larger scheme of things, because a lot of money is being, um, you know, sent out here. So how important is it that these beneficiaries are made to undergo the training? It's important to undergo uh, this training because you see that a lot of people have probably left school very, very long time at probably have, haven't even done any job. You will even be surprised. Uh, a lot of even young uh, graduates even uh, don't even have simple basic things like office ethics. They don't even know uh, basic things like uh, timing, uh, the, the importance of uh, coming to work on time, the importance of uh, doing things in an ethical way and things like that. And Professor Shibaji was talking to business uh, director on, uh, directors a few days ago on the, uh, on the importance of ethics in business and this these are things they are still telling directors at that level so you now understand the importance of training to young people who because without 
training without discipline is very, very difficult to manage a business. And we need to be very, very frank about it. It takes discipline. And those disciplines are imbibed by rigorous training, rigorous uh, uh, and retraining too. So, because so remember these are that some of these business owners, from what I understand the fund to be, will include mm -hmm. people from the informal sector with no sort of formal training, right? These people are going to have to learn these skills. Do you think that there is maybe um, a process that will capture the kind of education needed for this, that these people who are just, they just have the idea but they don't have the formal education to pursue it. Felicity, how much education is enough? How much, really? There is no uh, uh, time limit to education, so to say, and training. There's, you can't have too much training. You have to, that's why even in the public service, you talk about training and retraining virtually all the time. So that means some skills are probably outdated, some ideas are probably. Um, uh, have been phased out, you need new, for example, look at, people are talking about social media now. Even when we talk about social media, the skills are skills you still need to keep updating over time. There are new apps that are coming up. There are new uh, developments, even in social media that a lot of people use. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So that's why I ask the question, how much training is enough? You get what I'm trying to say? So we need to train, retrain, and further train. It's, it's never enough, no matter how your level of either formal education. And we have to also start a conversation around the kind of graduates Nigerian universities are even turning out. You get yeah, what, uh, let, let, let me go back to the first question I asked you before my colleague comes in. Okay. The question of continuity, because this is, not some, this is just the first batch of it. It's mm -hmm. $72 billion. It's going to run for a quite, um, quite a number of uh, years, and that would be after the lifespan of this administration. What worries you about continuity of projects like this, especially when we hear the humongous amounts that's being expended? I have, that, I have your fear, too. Your, in fact, I share, your, I share your sentiment about the fact that we lack the culture of continuity, and that's why you have so many abandoned projects. Is uh, there a way we can work around it to ensure that continuity? Now, what, we, what I think the government can do is to put things like this in proper legislation uh, to ensure that they are institutionalized over time. And that's why you see uh, there was a controversy uh, at a time when uh, the empire was moved from the office of vice president to the Ministry of um, uh, Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management. So there was too many... I saw, these are just normal things within administration. That was my... I was here to, uh, to talk about it on plus politics, you know, at some point. But I was like, but if we actually have the institutional and legal framework for things like this, there will be no need to abandon it. There will be no way you can Shouldn't abandon that, it. Shouldn't that be something that will be that should have been done? I, I'm really sorry, Osaragesh. Shouldn't <laughs> that be something that would have been done before even the announcement is made, and uh, the government will say, "This is our plan." Even after our tenure, to ensure that this social investment program intended to bring more youth into the mainstream economy is sustained. Okay. Uh, Felicity, you agree with me. Uh, it takes a while to actually uh, uh, pass a law. Uh, we, we operate a bicameral legislature system, and you know the politicking that goes with it. So that, but you, you know, governments seem not to be uh, ready to wait for that long. Are you getting my point now? Before commencing this critical project at this critical time, you know, when the nation is just coming out of a COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown. It's, you know, government was, I, I, I felt, government was just in the middle of, you know, a dilemma that should we wait for this? Uh, uh, do, you, do you want to but do, do you, this? Do you, have you heard of any such, you know, move for sustainability? Now, the Buhari administration still had three years uh, 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 to conclude this, uh, what's it called? That le legislation can come even in 2023. Okay. You get what I'm trying to say? To, uh, to, as a way of making it uh, 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 so, uh, sustainable after the Buhari administration. To, uh, three years is, is still a long time in public policy administration. What do you think the government must also uh, put in place uh, that should work side by side with these intervention funds? Um, I mentioned earlier that we have a lot of you know, details that are still missing. And if you keep giving out 20,000 naira every three months or 30,000 naira every three months without any, any appraisal, even to see the success of the last one, um, then you would, it's going to be a culture and you would never really be able to assist these business owners. And so what do you, you know, would you say the government must also put in place side by side 
um, these intervention funds. Shocking, this is coming at a time when the NSAS protest was, you know, still well, just a couple of days after it was so seemingly suspended. Um, it, it, people would say, oh, this is not a response to the NSAS protests. We weren't, no, Nigerians weren't asking for intervention fund. We're asking to stop police brutality. So if you still have poor electricity um, across the country, you still have police brutality and profiling, you still have, you know, almost very, very poor basic infrastructure that should assist businesses to thrive. Um, what would you suggest the government must also immediately be, be working on? Yeah, oh. Well, uh, in, in, in my, or uh, if I'm to suggest, uh, we will have to set up the, uh, the monitoring and evalu uh, evaluation uh, uh, timelines for you to be able to monitor assessments, for you to be able to uh, appraise uh, maybe every three months. And uh, uh, maybe you, you get what I'm trying to say, so that we can know the sorts. And that will be done with, in partnership with maybe NGOs. And uh, interestingly, the government has uh, instituted what is called an open government uh, 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 policy where you can actually track most of these things. You can actually uh, come up with timelines. You can come up with so many uh, so that we can, uh, the government can know what is supposed to be done and what is not supposed to be done. That said, now we also, uh, you, you were trying to uh, make a point about uh, NSAS. This uh, uh, program has little or nothing to do with NSAS. Now, uh, during the lockdown, uh, a lot of people, the worst happened. A lot of people feared, what a lot of people feared actually happened when the uh, index case of COVID was, uh, uh, came up in February. And, uh, you know, I was here on Plus TV Politics to, to talk about that some of these things, a lot of people fear uh, as a result of the fact that a lot of people simply are apprehensive of, about what will happen. But however, when the lockdown came, a lot of people were like, this is the end of the world. But what the government did was to set up what is called, uh, what is called the economic, economic sustainability team, headed by Professor Yemir Shibajo, the Vice President of Nigeria, to see a way how to, you know, uh, after lockdown, what will happen to the nation? What, what will be the case? With, and that is why it came up, uh, the, as part of the economic, uh, the economic sustainability team, came up with what is known as the economic sustainability plan. That is where most of these, um, what's it called, uh, social intervention programs like the MSME Survivor Fund, the youth, um, uh, the youth Fund, the National Youth Investment Fund, and what have you, came up from. It's, that one was uh, long, long before NSAS. The implementation only started uh, maybe uh, uh, recently. So what happens if we have another surge and there's another lockdown and people and businesses have to suffer again? Are we going to have another 75 billion, you know, in, in January or in February? Um, Honestly, I don't and, even and also to... And also, can we do better? Generally? Sure we can. I mean, if, if we're talking about 30,000 Naira as support to businesses, um, I'm not sure how many dollars I, I, that is. I, I that think is the, 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 the minimum amount, I think it's about 250,000 the minimum amount, you're talking about the salaries that will be paid maybe to the mm, workers. Yeah. The minimum amount, I understand, and then the maximum for maybe a group of, there's about 50 million, but about 3 million also for smaller enterprises. These monies, how impactful will it really be um, on these businesses, especially, like he said, if we are to, you know, get into another kind of lockdown as a result of um, the pandemic, or even if it's not a lockdown, there's already a prediction of recession. How impactful would these monies be when the value continues to drop? Well, like I said, uh, in my, uh, I, I don't even want to imagine another lockdown personally, as in I don't even want to. But on the, oh, that's on, on a lighter note. But if you look at it, like I said, this uh, investment from the government is highly necessary in this regard to pump, uh, uh, to run a deficit of this kind to help businesses grow. Because it's the responsibility of government in the final analysis. If the economy is it's going to shoulder, uh, it's going to, uh, sorry, come back to the government to help these businesses. It's like that everywhere in the world where, you know, uh, government actually help businesses, help young people, help small business, particularly uh, the SME sector. So All right, Mr. Olaleko Adigu, thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. Nice always be here. As always. <laughs> Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.